Okay, so we are going to do a bandit element test, and uh, this is the setup here. We have a signal box. Uh, we have the two caps with the bandit elements uh, sticking out. Uh, those are the caps connect connecting our soil specimens. Uh, this is the 2.5 inch one, and we have the 2.8 inch ones. Um, so when we have the uh, caps connect to our signal box, uh, we have the choice of P wave or S wave. Uh, we choose the S wave for this time. And the bottom caps, so this is the bottom caps. And the top ones, uh, uh, with, the, with the cables coming, coming out with an angle, this is the top caps. So the top caps go to signal in. And the top caps go to the uh, signal out. So again, bottom in and then top out. And next, uh, we set up our, our saw specimens. So this is our saw specimens. So we label bottom and top, very important. Uh, you know where, uh, you can identify where's the bottom and where's the top. And we, and we uh, set up those cap. Be very careful. We want to uh, have two, two like uh, uh, bandit elements, a crystal plate right here, very fair draw. So don't drop it, be very careful. Uh, make sure they, when they uh, uh, back in the saw specimens, they're well aligned. You want to be in face like this. So the bottom will, um, will uh, come up with a trigger um, signal and then you pick up from the top and they need to be in phase. Don't like go at 90 degree, you know, that would, uh, when the signal comes, um, uh, travel through the saw specimens from the uh, trigger to the receiver, you may like, you know, damage uh, your very fair drows uh, crystal, so be very careful on that. So uh, now we proceed our saw specimens. Make sure like, you know, uh, you have understanding. This case, uh, I know uh, this go flat this way. Go to the middle of our saw specimens. And then you come out from the top. So again, make sure this is flat. Go at the middle of the saw specimens. Go this way. So now, now this is set up. And then we go to our software. So this is our software. Then you open it, you wait until this become a green button. So now we know this is connected. Again, this box uh, connect with the computer through, a, through the USB cable. So first, uh, we, uh, this is the software and uh, to get started, uh, we start from the right hand side of this like uh, window. We start from the free uh, warning where you, we want uh, continuous uh, waveforms and we want the trigger source to be manual. Um, we have the trigger cycles as one and the off uh, be a large number as a hundred for now. And we keep this at, uh, the repeat as number three. And we have a uh, Whitney menu on the desktop. If you, in case you need to uh, go back to uh, record the settings, uh, you can read this menu. Next, um, on here, we want this uh, the trigger models to be normal at this point. And then now uh, we can change our amplitudes. So uh, here controls like the amplitudes and the frequency of the signal that we want to come out from the uh, from the trigger. So we can push this all the way to 100. And now you hear the sounds, which is uh, the signal started coming out. And you can also see uh, on the screen how this respond. So the red is the, uh, the trigger and the blue is whatever we see. So uh, now we have a pretty good response there. We are seeing that um, uh, we, have, uh, we have a very clear signal uh, on the blue ones. So in case that like when you set up your banner elements, if uh, they are not aligning well, or you don't have a good contact uh, between the bend elements with your soil specimens, then like uh, you may not see a very good uh, uh, receiving blue wave of blue, sig blue signal right there. But 
this case, we are good one. And also, it's important that uh, we, ha we are at the right frequency. If the frequency is not correct, so if you change the frequency, you can start like uh, the response of the blue change quite a bit. And uh, the next uh, objective here is once we have the amplitudes, uh, we want to identify the sweet frequency, the resonant frequency, the one unique frequency that uh, it will insync, it will like uh, at the resonance with the uh, red frequency. So we need to uh, search one that uh, being correct. And we have the two different uh, uh, limits here, the lower and the lower bound and upper bound help us to uh, search the frequency. So now we are at pawn one at like a really large number right there for the max. Uh, we, uh, we sort of uh, identify about 2000 ish for this time as a ballpark is the frequency range that we want to get to. So we, we may want to change those uh, limits. So help us to further to uh, narrow down uh, what we want. So I put uh, 100 right there to replace the pawn one, and I would put uh, 10,000 right there, or 20,000 for this case to replace the very large number. So now we are working at a more narrowed range. So we can start to play with this frequency now to identify one that give us the maximum amplitude for the receiving signal which is about right there maybe 2000 ish so I call this good and then uh, next I change um, the waveform generate the waveform generator from continuous to tone past at that times I only have one signal color uh, going coming out and receiving the signal from the one signal from the trigger and I want to drag this to the um, from more from the left hand side of the screen um, and then uh, I want to I would uh, zoom in on the x-axis so this bottom this button here is to zoom in on the x-axis so this will be too much now so I zoom out again it needs a little bit of time to respond So this could be the best we can do. And we can also zoom in for the uh, amplitude of the um, of the blue signal here. Try one more time, see if I can zoom in for the x-axis. One more time right there. So now this gives us a uh, pretty great uh, response curve. And I, if I want, if I may, I can fine tune with the frequency. So at that point, I call it, I call it good uh, on we getting one trigger and then this is the receiver, receiving signal. And now I bring up my time cursor. I label it at T1 here, the peak of the trigger and the peak of the receiving signal. And the time I read here is the time that we want to find out, we want to measure from the uh, from the trigger uh, bender elements to the receiving bender elements, which is the sig the time difference we're seeing there on the screen, and that travel time call can correlate with the shear modulus uh, of the saw specimens of the saw that we're testing. So this number is very important. And at this point, uh, pretty much we finish the test. I will put uh, make sure I do a screenshot capture the screen we have here. And then also I go to um, tool and export the waveforms, so I can export export the um, the data, and I will save it um, on the location that it is as a CSV file, and then we can further do uh, data interpretation data uh, later. So uh, make sure you save it as a file name that as. Uh, uh, as you need, uh, we will go back to change this, change this later on. And uh, don't forget at the end of the day, uh, you don't want like uh, this being uh, on for too long because uh, the bandit elements will keep uh, giving out signals, which means it, it vibrating your saw specimens at the contact point. Uh, you don't want that going for too long. 
So once you finish the test, make sure you put trigger here. And then, uh, so make sure this is the right locations. And then like uh, you put a trigger there, then pretty much you stop the, the test. And that's all uh, for an elements demos.